What's going on everybody? My name is Steven. You're watching the Foul Air Gun Channel and we are back at it guys and today we are taking a look at the AEA HP SS Plus in 25 caliber. This is a semi-automatic air rifle from AEA Air Guns and just take a look at this thing. I gotta be honest with you just a little bit of a spoiler alert while I'm jumping into this video here. Uh, I do like it so be prepared for a video of positivity some negative things that we can talk about but uh overall the aea hp ss plus and semi-automatic it is uh it is one heck of a piece of machinery uh it's a little bit more than i had expected getting uh, out of the box so uh first of all i just want to cover the fact that this is 25 caliber uh i have yet to see any information on the 25 caliber so we have the very last 25 caliber that they had in stock at Utah Air Guns. So shout out to Utah Air Guns. I just want to say thank you very much for this uh, as well. I just want to say that I could not find any information as far as uh, any kind of uh, velocities or any information whatsoever uh, on this rifle. Uh, you can pretty much stick to the facts. Uh, anything as far as what revolves around the 30 caliber version pretty much goes with this as well. So uh, you have the 300, the upgraded 300 and CC uh air tank here this is aluminum by the way this gun is extremely light it feels very nice in the hand uh with the adjustable buttstock on it which comes with it which is fully adjustable for your length of pull here uh and it is it's plastic uh but it's nice it has a very nice uh buffer tube for it uh it's machined it has this nice little hinged uh folding stock here that comes on it so that's I mean, come on, that's just, that's an awesome plus right there. Your safety right here on the side, it's a non-ambidextrous safety, so if you're left-handed, it may be a little awkward for you, but you got your fire and you got your safety here. You got your action right here on the side, which that's one thing to go ahead and talk about. Uh, this thing is real heavy. You got to really pull this thing back to be able to put your magazine, to load your magazines into there. And uh, it can be a little bit of a challenge if you, uh, if you have weak hands or if you have uh, really large hands I could see that kind of being an issue getting there on that uh, charging lever this gun is adjustable here it has this little power adjuster right here on the side of the block here and you can actually adjust this down straight up to the top there is going to be your full power at least this is how they sent it to me and this is what I've seen from other videos full power straight up and I believe to your left, going down each way, I believe it's going to the left maybe is what's actually gonna cut down. It's gonna choke up on some air that's leaving that barrel. So you can cut down your velocities on this uh, pistol here. So that's pretty neat. Uh, as you can see, I got on here, I just covered this uh, scope that was sent to us by Texas Precision Optics. So thanks guys, I wanna give a shout out to you there. I am not sponsored by them. Uh, they do help me out over here just a little bit at the channel. So I just wanna say big shout out to them. If you are looking for some budget friendly, wonderful glass, uh, as far as clarity and durability, I have not had any issue with them. I had, apologize, one scope I had a tiny issue with, lost some uh, adjustments in the turret in elevation. And I called the company and they have a lifetime warranty. So uh, it, it was absolutely no hassle. I boxed it up, I sent it in there and they sent me another exact uh, rifle scope right back. Uh, they offered to help me as much as they possibly could. So Texas Precision Optics has uh, helped me a little bit here with this optic. This is the VT 3 to 12 by 32. This is a first focal plane rifle scope here and it is a compact rifle scope. It is extremely compact, it's six inches. I say it can get smaller, but uh, for uh for the scope here on this pistol and this rig here i say that's a pretty nice little setup uh topped also with uh this is a sniper one piece uh scope mount here that i have uh it is the pistol comes with 11 meter 11 millimeter dovetail uh scope mounts here so you don't have that weaver picatinny rail on the top which is a little unfortunate i think i would like to see that incorporated but uh you know dovetail it's not too bad i will say this though here is the reason why i'm not too fond of it and luckily they did this for us here so uh on this rifle here they actually have a set where you can have your lock-in pin the screw that locks down your scope mounts and you're gonna need that because what did i do i got this thing right out of the box yesterday and uh, i put scope on it right here and i didn't put that little uh that lock-in pin down in there that screw to lock it in 
uh, down into it and set it down into that hole. I just wanted to see how it'd react. And I shot and I shot and I shot magazines last night. And this thing was walking back quite a bit. It does have quite a bit of recoil. So if you're going to be uh, mounting, anything, mounting anything on here as far as uh, an optic that may be a little sensitive, be mindful of that because it could get a little tricky. Uh, so we got that. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, this thing is fully... Uh, it has a shroud barrel shroud that covers over the entire thing here and it actually has your baffles built right into it so this thing is absolutely very in my opinion backyard friendly so the way this system operates here i apologize i'm gonna take too long is that there is this system here this tube that operates where to blow back once the projectile leaves the barrel and there's air traveling through the front of that shroud here some of that travels back behind here and the air pressure actually actuates and pushes that spring back with this guide rod which actually pushes this charging handle this bolt and locks it back in place that's how that semi-automatic action works so it has inside here if you're interested to know you'll have a sleeve and then you'll have i'm not even sure how many there were of these there were about five or six could have been seven of them in there but they're just these little thin aluminum stamped uh, baffles that slide down just nicely everything nice and snug down in there and it quiets it up real nicely and i will go ahead and say purposes of the people that may be out there asking right this very second may be curious about this can you remove the baffles what if you want to shoot it while it's louder will it still react the same does it still perform it does as far as i'm concerned anyways i've taken it off uh taken all of them out and shot a few uh, magazines and it is absolutely much louder comparably but uh it's still cycled through uh, i can tell you this right off the bat too uh it does not like heavy heavy uh slugs or any, uh, any kind of ammunition of sort like that uh, i had a really hard time with it on full power adjustment which is going to get the maximum amount of blowback to recharge that handle i assume anyways based off of my little brain here and uh i've shot some heavier pellets the uh 30 jsp 33 95s and they will fly but you just got to kind of do this weird flicking of the uh the trigger here it just kind of just makes the action not really want to lock i'm just not quite sure what's going on in there it's just not cycling properly so if you want to shoot heavier grain pellets out of this thing it is i guess you'd say possible but it is just not functional so here we go ramble 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 for the whole first eight minutes of this video like I said, I wouldn't do. This is a 3600 PSI air pistol. So uh, this is actually the upgraded version of the, uh, uh, I believe it was the HPSS, uh, just the original HPSS, and it had a smaller uh, air cylinder on there. And uh, this is my first AEA air gun, actually. Uh, I was just interested in something I could have around the house that I could, you know, plink a little bit quicker and kind of get these crows that uh, I've had a hard time shooting too. Those things are, uh, they can be a real, real tough challenge with some of these bolt action rifles you want to follow up. Sometimes you just don't have that. And, uh, you know, that's what I found in this right here. I'll say overall, I've been pretty happy with it. Uh, there are a couple things that I do not like about it. And I'll have to show you, I have, uh, one of my magazines has already failed. And uh, I do not like to let go the faces of my magazine and let that thing slam back against the stop. So I take good care of my magazine. So it has failed entirely on its own right out of the box. It's already failed within the first day. So uh, AEA magazines, probably not the greatest magazines in the world. Uh, you can kind of just tell by uh, parts quality that they're pretty cheaply made. But, you know, uh, at price point, and I believe this was right here, right about a little less than 600 bucks maybe. You know, when you pay for something like $600, you expect a whole lot, but you gotta really be thinking about what you're actually getting here for 600 bucks, and <laughs> I'm rather impressed. Also, these have the uh, interchangeable pistol grips here, so if you wanna switch this out, and I believe you can throw on your favorite AR uh, type uh, pistol grip or anything, whatever the sort right there, as well, I believe that this is a AR style buffer tube, so you can just go ahead and feel free to change out your stock here. Get you something with a nice rubber uh, uh, plate on it here, and uh, maybe a cheek riser or something a little more adjustable if you want. If that's your thing, you know, that's good. Uh, I personally don't mind it the way it is. Altogether, the package is nice, it's light, 
uh, it's it's compact it definitely is it's something you could absolutely fit into a uh, even a smaller size book bag uh, or backpack or what have you and uh, it would definitely work out uh, fitting in here so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna get over here we're gonna shoot us a group this is why I, this is how I think I'm gonna do this video here uh, we're going to from the full field go back over here and we're gonna shoot us a group and I think we're just gonna come right out here and we're gonna shoot out at uh, 40 we're gonna make us a group over here on the side and not really sure if I have my my stuff all situated here uh, but the only thing that's on this paper is I've shot this little group right here uh, earlier and I have this one little random shot but I kind of marked that up with some green paint so excuse that but we may just try to make a little aim point on somewhere on here and just shoot a couple things just so I can kind of demonstrate to you what it's doing and as well we got uh, Mr. Coyote out there at 55 so we may take a couple shots at him I'll be honest with you guys too about the accuracy real quick while we're on the subject I uh got this thing out of the box yesterday I threw the scope on it and I got it zeroed in in just a couple shots <coughs> my goodness I apologize for that anywho uh, I got it zeroed in just a couple shots and I was shooting at 55 yards with H&N Hornets out of this thing right out of the box no kind of messing with it whatsoever just shooting it and it was making a group with H&N Hornets at 55 yards and I was actually really surprised with that I backed it into uh, 30 yards right over here and I shot a group with it, and it was still a nice tight group. It only got better, so I was just actually thoroughly surprised with that because uh, that's really what I wanted to be able to shoot out of this were uh, some H&N Hornets or some Predator Poly Mags or something, maybe take out a couple uh, woodchucks or something this summer with it. Anyways, let's get back over here. I'm going to get this thing loaded up. We have the, well, I have the magazine already loaded, and we're going to start out shooting some uh, just some JSB 3395s, which is you know, what I came out here and was messing around with earlier. We're going to switch it up and shoot some Predator Poly Mags. And we're going to take the baffles out of this thing and everything so you all can hear the difference in noise. And we'll shoot uh, over the chronograph. And so, you know, we'll we'll do a couple things. We'll check out some groups, check out some chronograph numbers. And, by the way, because I completely forgot to hit on that too, uh, the velocities I spoke, that kind of bounce all over the place. I apologize again. Uh, I spoke with Ryan Jacobson over at Utah Air Guns, and he had to give me information on this rifle. So... The 30 caliber version says that it moves a, I believe it's 55 grain or something, 44, 55 grain uh, slug at 720 feet per second. And that's just not super appealing. I mean, that's still carrying a, a good bit of energy, 50 plus foot pounds, I believe, of energy. So still great, you know, if that's what you like. But there was no real information on this. When I spoke with Ryan, he told me 850 feet per second. So being as I could not find any information out there on the intro zones whatsoever and I just am not part of social media or anything much other than just YouTube here so uh, it's kind of difficult for me to get information I uh, couldn't find much of anything out there through Google so uh, 850 feet per second is what we're being told so keep that in mind as we go out and shoot these chronograph numbers so let's actually do that I'm gonna get over here we're gonna kill these chronograph numbers and uh, then we're gonna shoot us a couple groups and then I got a couple really cool targets we can blast all right guys let's go ahead and bust out some chronograph numbers so we have right here up to what i would pretty much consider a full fill which is right at just below 250 bar so right at about 3500 maybe around 3500 psi there and that's another thing i do actually like about this gauge here is that aea has incorporated both bar and your psi right on there so that is nice we have a chronograph set up there we have one magazine of domed skirted JSB 25.39 pellets. Safety's off. All right, and I hope you all can see these chronograph numbers. 819, 830, 826, 829, 804 and I got an error that's our first magazine so <clears throat> we are uh, yeah I can go ahead and just throw that information out there to you so this is one other thing too guys paying attention here uh, that uh, I've already had a failure on this pistol here and this is what it is and I'm fairly certain it is not user error but it is what it is so when you do not have a magazine 
in this pistol it is not supposed to uh, do anything so by technical you're not supposed to be able to put this on safety or anything I believe uh, when there's no magazine in it because you should be able to just pull that trigger and nothing happened so if you want to decock you pull it all the way back you have to really pull that thing you pull the trigger down until it's released okay now you can see there's nothing going on there that's completely released now technically when you let go it should still be in the unlocked position but unfortunately there's been some failure and it's not wanting to work and safety still works so that's great but it's not supposed to do that so what have i found as my resolve to this well it's very simple you just got to keep that charging handle from backing out so you're just going to have to hold that with your hand there and shoot it one time and when you shoot it it's supposed to be like that there now the charging handle has not gone back has not gone back and locked into place and it's good to go and you'll see safety does not work when it's in this position here so there is uh, another failure we have magazine failure and right off the bat we have this uh, decocking failure which I'm not gonna lie to you guys it's not gonna say it's not I'm not sold on I'm not saying it's you know it's terrible because of that I mean I'm just saying be aware that that could be the case so anyways I'll reset my chronograph here and uh, we're gonna get us another magazine filled up and that's gonna drop us from we were right there at right below 250 bar right to about 200 and right about 210 215 somewhere right around there so you see where we were at still moving up there in the 800 feet per second with a 25.4 grain pellet let me get this uh now magazine loaded back up because unfortunately my other one's failed so let me get this magazine loaded back up and we're gonna shoot us another group i apologize we're gonna shoot us some more of this chronograph all right guys so there we go still right there at about 215 this is our second magazine and again we are on full power adjustment here so we were right up there. I believe that's as high as it's gonna take us right there. So let's uh shoot some more. Second magazine. 847. 832. 850. There's that 850 we were looking for. 832. 845. 818. 840. 842. 838. And I believe that was the end of it there. Yep. All right, let's see if this thing will work this time with us. Nope, it's still it's still in that position there, so still have a little failure. I'm gonna load this magazine up again here, and like I said, we're just shooting these uh, JSB Exact 2539s. And you just roll that magazine all the way back, and the first pellet here you want to place reverse, so facing with your the head of your pellet facing the black side there and then you can just drop them all down in as you go along here and we're not worried about pellet selecting or anything because we're just shooting over the chronograph here for some numbers all right let's take a look here and see where we're at with our pressure and take a look at that and notice what that's done right there so we've only went from right about 220 bar i'd say we were at right around maybe 215 220 somewhere in there and we've only just dropped down right to 200 bar so uh that's pretty good use in the air there we're at probably a good spot in that shot curve so we're right at 3000 psi so let's keep dropping them through this chronograph and see what kind of numbers we're getting here see how many magazines we're getting Safety off, here we go. Look at that. 603. 854. 839. 852. 828. 829. 821. 830. That hit my target out there. 815. Another 815. I think we got one more. Nope, that was it. <laughs> So we're still up there in that 800 feet per second range. Oh, it's still not doing it there for me. All right, well, where are we at here with our pressure? Look at that. 
we went from 200 to about man that's still good 106 about 150 between 150 to about 180 maybe 185 bar somewhere right in there maybe right at 2600 psi so still great i say i'm just gonna load one more magazine up here because i feel like it's dropping these last few shots down closer to 800 feet per second i seen we got one shot that jumped way up there 600 feet per second that's that's nice now keep in mind as well these are uh 25.4 grain pellets if by any chance for whatever reason you're chasing velocities out there and you're looking for faster i'm most certain that if you were to throw in some kind of platinum pellet or uh lead free pellets or anything it's sort even h and n hornets now that are running at 22 grains would make much better velocities probably up closer towards 900 feet per second so all right where are we at here again we are i mean i'm telling you right at like 100 and it looks like it's almost it's risen some and it has it's gone up and it's sitting right about 26 or 27 now 100 psi so let's uh Let's see what happens. Sometimes you got to give that air a little bit of time to settle down. It gets cool once it's ejected from the cylinder really fast. We finished off at 815. 840, look at that. 816, 821, 819, 813, 809, 807, 803, 800. There's that 790. There's our first one. All right, that was it. 790. And I believe that was our fourth magazine. So, and that's how it's supposed to be there. All right, well, anyway, so check it out. 790 feet per second. Okay, that's still really respectable. If I'm not mistaken, that's somewhere around maybe 35, 30, it's 30 plus foot pounds of energy out of a semi-automatic pistol. This thing has a 10 inch barrel. So that's making good velocities. And look at this from the 250 bar fill which is pretty much where we started at maybe just a hair below and we've shot four magazines and we are still just right at i mean it's still 155 155 bar somewhere right there in 22 2300 psi range i mean that's absolutely insane it's using the air uh very good that's for sure now this thing you can actually bump this down and make your velocity shoot extremely low so we may do that in another video but for right now uh that'll conclude our little part here with our chronograph and uh now we're gonna go make us a couple groups with this thing and then we're gonna shoot us some fun stuff